your first example completely. We're not going to do number one on the top. And we're going to start on number three, then we're going to come back to number two. Okay, so number three in the bottom right corner says use the properties of squares to find the missing coordinates and you're not to use any new variables. So KLMN is a square on the X and Y axis and we know that L is located at AB. Okay. Properties of squares, what do we know about squares? Four right angles. What else do we know? Good, and four congruent sides, and we know a ton more, but we're just going to go with that. Okay. To get to L, starting from the origin, I had to move to the right how far? I don't have lines, so don't count lines. A, good. To get over to L, I had to move over A amount to get there. That's my X value, my horizontal distance. How far did I have to go up to get to L? B, that's my Y value. Remember, your Y tells you up and down, and your X tells you left and right. Okay, this is a square. I want all the sides congruent. So if I needed to move A to the right to get to L, how far do I need to move to the left to get to K? Yeah, I'm going to move A again, but since I'm moving left, I need to make it negative A. How far up do I have to go from the x-axis? B. I'm just moving up B. Okay, so then K's ordered pair would be negative A, B. N, down here in quadrant 3, starting from the left act, or the origin, how far left do I have to move? Yeah, I got to go negative. That tells me my direction, but I'm moving A in distance. And then I have to go down how far? B, good. Negative is my down, B is the distance. Okay. Even if these were numbers, the negatives tell you which direction you're moving on the coordinate plane. If they're negative numbers, then you're either moving down or left. If they're positive, then you're moving up and right. The actual number tells you the distance you're moving. So I'm moving A in distance or B in distance. What about for M? What would be my ordered pair for M? How far to the right do I go? A, and then I go where? Negative B, I go down B. So A or M would be at A negative B. You're always going to start at the origin. Yep, you're going to base it off of that. And they'll give you one ordered pair to go off of, at least one, if not two. Okay, we're going to go back to number two now. This one used the properties of parallelograms to find the missing coordinates. And then this one tells us, again, not to use any new variables. So O is located at the origin, so we know that's going to be 0, 0. C is at negative x, 0, because then it go up or down. A is at negative pq, and we still have to find b then. Negative x just means I went left. How far left did I go to get here? X, good, I went x. The negative just tells me which direction. If I would have gone negative 4, then the length of the bottom would be 4. If I would have went to the left 18, so it was at negative 18, then that length would be 18. Right now, it's just a length of x. What do you know about parallelograms and like the lengths of their sides? Opposite sides are congruent. Good. So if the bottom is a length of x, what's the top going to be? x. So the distance from a to b is x. I don't know how far that is, but I know it's x amount. I have to figure out what this space right here is. Because B, from the origin, or from the y-axis, I have to move this space, and then i got to move X to get over here. So I need to figure out what this space is. Any ideas how far they moved from the y-axis over to A? 
where I drew that little red segment. Good. Say it. Good. <laughs> From the y axis over to point A, they moved over P. That's the x value. So this space is P, whatever that represents. But to get all the way over to B, I have to go P and then X. I'm going to do this movement and this movement. Which directions are we moving? Left, both times. So then I'm going negative P, negative X. Moving left P and then left X. How far up from the X axis do we have to go to get to point B? Yes, it's two. That's how far you went up to get to point A. We want the opposite sides to be congruent, so we're going to move up the same distance. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about the mid segments of a trapezoid. By definition, there at the top, the mid segment is um, the segment that joins the midpoints of the non parallel opposite sides. I don't know why they don't just write legs there. A mid segment's always going to join the midpoints of the two legs on a trapezoid. Okay. Hopefully, this word seems familiar to you because in chapter five, before Christmas, we talked about the mid segment of a triangle being the segment that connects the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. This guy would be my mid segment. And back in chapter five, the mid segment of a triangle is always parallel to the third side and what its length. Half, good. So if this is 3, what would be my base? 6, good. And if the base is 60, then my mid-segment would be 30. Okay, so that was our mid-segment of triangles. Mid-segment of trapezoids have similar rules. This mid-segment of a trapezoid is also parallel to the bases. So we have three parallel lines there. And the length of the mid-segment is half the sum of the bases. When you hear the word sum, what math operation do you think of? Addition, good. And if you're going to take half of something, what else could you do? Divide it by 2, good. So they're using this formula that the length of MN, the mid-segment, equals 1 half times the sum of the two bases. They would add these lengths together. You could also write it as MN equals the two bases, TP plus RA, divided by 2, whatever you Floats your boat if you like dividing besides multiplying. It's still the same thing. An example. If RA was a length of 12 and TP was, I don't know, 47, and I wanted to find the length of MN, you add the two bases and divide by 2. 29.5. That would be the length of our mid-segment then. It's the average of the two bases, mid-segment, middle. It's got to be in the middle, so it's the average. Try those first two examples on number one. Find the length of the mid-segments. You want to make sure that the line that's between the two bases is the mid-segment, so double-check the markings or what they give you. Like on the first one, they mark the top and bottom halves congruent, so I know that these are midpoints. On the second one, they're giving me the length, but it's still representing that these are midpoints, so make sure you double check that they're actually midpoints. Um, but then add your bases and divide by 2, and you should get 11 for the first one. And 7.5 for the second one, you agree? Okay. Ross, how far is it from 6 to 11? Like on a number line. Okay. How about from 11 to 16? Okay. Ross, how far is it from 5 to 7.5? Mm -hmm. How about 7.5 to 10? Good. The length of the mid segment should always be the number right in the middle of the two bases because you added them together and divided by 2. You're finding the average. So that's one way you can check your work if it's actually in the middle. Go ahead and try that third one. This one says find the value of x. 
two ways you can set this up, well, three ways, really. Um, if you use where you just add them and divide by 2, then 2x minus 4 plus x minus 3 divided by 2 should equal 10, the mid-segment. If you use the little theorem at the top and plug in the information, the mid-segment equals 1 half the sum of the bases. Or, because on both of these, you would multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of your fractions, you could do that right away and double the mid-segment, and that equals the sum of your bases. Whatever makes most sense to you, you can set it up all three ways. After you do all your work, you should get x to equal 9. Hmm? Sum of the bases divided by 2 equals the mid-segment. Question? Cool. We're done.